Good morning. The intention for this morning's Mass is for Salvatore Vitro, requested by his wife and family. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honour. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This Alleluia. is a Friday of the third week of Easter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Prepare our hearts to receive our Lord Jesus in this Eucharist. Let us ask forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you grant pardon and peace to repentant sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal and strengthen us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection May through the love of the Spirit, ourselves rise to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless. For they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias. Come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, Things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. 
He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him. I'm sorry. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. To whom do you think God is speaking those words this morning? Go out to all the world and tell the good news. I think so. We have to hear them, though. And we see we continue our reading uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, and this is a very important moment in salvation history. We have the conversion of St. Paul. Huh? We see how he was a devout Pharisee, a leader among the Jews, and considered the Christians the first followers of Jesus, followers of the way, because they weren't called Christians yet, uh, to be a threat to Judaism. Uh, they were heretics, and he wanted to do away with them. So he would arrest them and have them thrown in jail, and he did that in Jerusalem, we saw the other day, and now he's on his way to Damascus with letters to do the same there. And along the way, he encounters the risen Jesus, the living risen Jesus. He never knew the historical uh, Jesus in terms of while well, Jesus was walking this earth with his 12 apostles. And what happened? How do you picture this in your mind? Usually you picture him on the, on the ground and a big horse standing there, don't you? Doesn't mention the horse though, does it? Just as he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Huh, me, uh, Jesus speaking to him. We picture him as having fallen off a horse, and we see the horse there. And scholars say probably that's correct because a man of his stature, he'd be traveling by horse. He wouldn't be walking, he'd be traveling by horse. And many of the artists, you've seen some of the great paintings of this scene, especially with Caravaggio, the Italian Baroque artist, uh, who lived the end of the 16th century, died in the beginning of the 17th century, 1610, uh, a painting of this scene, the conversion of St. Paul. And it's a beautiful painting. It's all dark. It has to play on light and darkness, especially in that type of painting. And, and in the center, though, is the horse, this big horse. Not Paul or Saul at that time, but he's on the ground, but the light is on Saul. The light is on him, his conversion. And the theme is that uh, the horse represents all the cares and entanglements of his life up until this moment. 
But now he's on the ground and the light of faith is shining upon him, which he turns his whole life around. He has a new world. He sees the world differently now once he encounters Christ and he's a changed person. And after a short stay, as we see here, having his eyes cleared by Ananias and Ananias, and then spending a short time in Damascus, he'll go out now and he will preach the gospel to every synagogue he can find. Uh, they always went first to the, their own Jewish brothers and sisters to the synagogues, but as they were being rejected uh, by the, the Jewish people, uh, he turned more and more to the Gentiles. But you see here, if Paul says to him, who are you, sir? He doesn't know who this is. Who are you, sir? Huh? But later on, he'll call him Lord, and he'll preach Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So it's an important moment in the salvation history, the conversion of St. Paul, and that he'll be the great evangelist that he's become. Huh? But light and darkness is play, uh, uh, played throughout history as good and bad, and even in John's Gospel, a lot of uh, symbolism to light and darkness. And, and here, and uh, the scene, especially in Caravaggio's painting, uh, the darkness representing the past life, the former way of life, all the cares and entanglements of this world, and the light shining on him, his faith now in Christ, and a new, new, whole new world ahead of him, a new way of seeing life in the world and giving himself to, to, to life. Huh? And same is true in our lives, too. There are many things that entangle us huh, in this life. Uh, I like that little devotion now promulgated by Pope Francis. We have Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II, promoting divine mercy, which has really grown a lot in our church, and we, we love that devotion. But Pope Francis uh, has promoted the uh, uh, Mary undoer or un, untire of knots, uh, the knots in our lives, the entanglements in our lives, the cares, uh, uh, the sins, uh, and uh, that ask her to help us. But the, in terms of, of the Lord, uh, he does that too. In our lives, there's always a, a mixture of, of light and darkness. Most everyone's life, no one's pure light, maybe our Blessed Mother, yes, but uh, most of us is a, a combination of light and darkness, and there's a clash in our, in our lives within us uh, between darkness and light. You can say sin and goodness, or however word you want to use, and, and life's journey is to try to have the, uh, the receding of the darkness, increasing of the light, huh? or sometimes it's the other way, you know, receding of the light and increasing of the darkness, but we turn to the Lord. He is the light of the world. It's another I am statement uh, of Jesus uh, in John's gospel, just beautiful I am statements, and uh, we turn to him who is our light. And this Eucharist is a source of light for us in the midst of this world, and all that's happening in this world outside, all that's happening in our lives, we come to him uh, as a focal point of light, especially in the small little consecrated host that we have adoration. That's a, a beacon of light in our lives to help guide us and, and then change our life. Our life is different than that in the world. Huh? Because now we are called to live a life of unselfishness and service, a life of peace, a life of justice, a life of, 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 of uh, forgiveness huh? and mercy and compassion and a life of sacrifice too. Uh, we only can do that when we focus on the light of Jesus and let his light fill us. That's the symbolism of baptism too, with the uh, receiving of the light of Christ from the, the Easter candle, the Christ candle. We have his light within us. We have to nourish him, preserve that light and help it to grow greater. And then we can go out to all the world and proclaim the good news by our own example. Huh? We'll be known as members of the way, as Christians, because of our words and our deeds and how we live our life in this world, which is contrary to all the philosophies and the, the values of this world often. We have a continuation of the sixth chapter of John, that beautiful uh, I am the bread of life passage. Uh, and we talked about that, the word of God being the bread of life, we're nourished on in the mass, the importance of the mass and then Holy Communion, our Lord's body, blood, soul, and divinity as our food for the journey to help us uh, to live the gospel. And so we continue that and we see here the quarrel among those when they heard him say that he was going to feed them with his own flesh and blood. We'll see later, many turned away from him when they heard that, even some of those who were following him. And we'll see how he turns to Peter and the others and say, will you also leave me? Sad to say, uh, they did not, but sad to say many today have, have left him home. They no longer believe, maybe, in his real presence. But he promises us, whoever feeds on his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life. And he says something here should really uh, encourage us and strengthen us, and we have to reflect on the truth of this, huh? Uh, he says that 
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. And I in him or her. Excuse both, okay? We don't want to excuse the ladies. We don't want to exclude you. What a thought. What a fantastic thought, huh? We're here this morning sharing this Eucharist. Jesus will come to us and dwell within us and remain in us as we remain in him. That's the importance of the Eucharist. We don't wander far off, off up the path. We don't wander more and more into the darkness, but we stay in the light and increasingly grow in that light. I'll just share a real quick uh, meditation again from Father Austin Fleming's uh, little book, uh, Good Morning, Good God. Uh, I mentioned it before. It has a lot of beautiful little prayers in it. If you find some people found it helpful, so I'll take the moment to share this one with you. A moment's grace. This is a moment of special grace at Mass, huh? Tremendous grace, unlimited grace, if we open ourselves to our Lord's presence and love and really offer ourselves to Him. But all throughout the day, there are many moments of grace that a lot of times we just don't recognize. So. Sometimes, Lord, in spite of all that's going on around me and everything that's happening inside me, there comes a moment's grace, pure gift from you. There comes a time when without a doubt, I know your presence in my loneliness, your truth in my confusion, your wisdom in my folly. A time when I trust deeply all your strength around my weakness, your promise in my hopelessness, your spirit guiding me along my way. A time when your light fills my darkness, your hand lifts my heavy heart, and your mercy gently wipes my tears away. Unexpected gifts from you, these moments come more and more than I know, for my fear and hurt and anger blind me, and I often miss your coming near, your strong arm reaching out to lift me up from all that keeps me down and holds me back. Let no grace moment pass me by, no gift from you go missing or unopened, no glance of healing peace escape my notice. Today, Lord, in spite of all that's going on around me and everything that's happening inside me, Send me a moment of your grace, pure gift from you, to help me know that you are with me through it all. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him and her. <coughs> Let us raise up now the special intentions we have to our loving God. For the Church throughout the world, may the Lord guide her people in fervently spreading the good news to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their decision-making to always <clears throat> choose life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by natural disasters or violence in their communities. May the Lord grant them peace and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, may the light of our faith shine brightly before those we encounter each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they experience the wonder of God in his kingdom forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the soul of Salvatore Vitro, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout our troubled world and to the war in Ukraine and the end of the war in the Holy Land and it doesn't keep expanding. You saw now Israel responded to Iran's attack by uh, also firing off missiles to Iran. But we pray that this will not continue even grow larger than it is and actually end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For increasing vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permit the accurate, and for those in formation and study, especially Ari and Jonathan and Deacon George, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In our hearts now let us raise up our own special needs and attentions and those of all our loved ones. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of this new day, 
that we can begin by sharing this Eucharist of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through him and the Holy Spirit, our blessed Mother, St. Joseph, all your saints and angels, guide us on our way that we will be filled with your love and life and we will go out and proclaim to all the world your goodness. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you, who do the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. sins. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. <clears throat> Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Archbishop, Enrique, his auxiliary, and all our bishops, clergy, religions consecrated, and your entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. <clears throat> Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, <clears throat> the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The crucified is risen from the dead and has redeemed us. Alleluia.
light had shone in our darkness God has shone in our heart With the light of the glory of Jesus the Lord We hold a treasure not made of gold In earthen vessels wealth untold One treasure only The Lord, the Christ In earthen vessels He has chosen the lowly Who are small in this world in his weakness, his glory, in Jesus the Lord. We hold a treasure not made of gold. In earthen vessels wealth untold. Today being Friday, we'll have exposition of Blessed Sacrament immediately following Mass, an opportunity to come and spend time before the Lord in adoration until the 6 p.m. Mass. <clears throat> this is coming to the end of the third week now of uh, Easter time. We've been reflecting on the beautiful I Am statement, I Am the Bread of Life, this coming Sunday. We'll reflect on a, another one, uh, I Am the Good Shepherd, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is end. Let's go forth in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Have a good day. Enjoy the weekend and keep safe and healthy. Of the devil. May God be with you.